Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the news of Shuruq TV. Today's stories include Al Burhan reiterates Sudan's rejection of foreign troops with the UN mission. Sudan and Ethiopia Political Committee concludes work in Addis Ababa. Supreme Committee for Health Emergencies extends the lockdown. The head of Sudan's Sovereign Council reiterated the position of his country that no peacekeepers are needed in Darfur region after the exit of the hybrid operation UNAMIT from the Western Sudan province. Abdel Fattah al-Burhan received UNAMIT chief Jeremiah Mamabulu, who briefed him about the ongoing discussions between the African Union and the United Nations over the situation in Darfur after the planned withdrawal of the Blue Helmets by the 31st of October 2020. During the meeting, Al-Burhan affirmed Sudan's stated position regarding the nature of the upcoming UN mission to Sudan, which will replace the UNAMID, said Ambassador Ilham Shanter, the Assistant Undersecretary of Political Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in statements after the meeting. So much is being discussed at the United Nations about UNAMID's uh, resolution that is coming. And I know that there is also a planned meeting of the Peace and Security Council of the AU. So very important at this point in time when so much is being decided about the future, the exit of UNAMIT. As you know, we've been working on the exit of UNAMIT um, to get uh, this meeting, particularly we're warmly welcomed and we're able to exchange quite a number of uh, issues uh, towards this uh, exit of UNAMIT. Uh, towards what needs to be done as we go out. Uh, we also discuss amongst all things what can still be done with our presence here on the ground. When um, the, we are supporting, for example, the, the peace negotiations that are going on, um, we give uh, support to the mediation of the South Sudanese. They've done a good job. Um, to bring us to almost really the verge of concluding these negotiations. We know that they have extended, um, that the peace negotiations now hopefully they want to see themselves achieving something by the 20th of June. The Sudanese Ethiopian High Level Political Committee concluded work in the Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa after a two day round of meetings. The Sudan's delegation to the committee's meetings, led by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Ambassador Omar Bashir Manis, and the Ethiopian delegation headed by Dr. Dimik Mekonen, the Deputy Prime Minister of Ethiopia. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs delivered during his visit to Ethiopia a message from the Prime Minister, Dr. Abdullah Hamadok, to his Ethiopian counterpart. The meeting has emphasized commitment of the two countries to enhance bilateral cooperation, the importance of continuing deliberations to create conducive environment for the solution of the border issues in the current frameworks and based on the agreed on and signed documents. The Ministry of Justice issued this evening a statement regarding the U.S. Supreme Court's decision issued today on the bombings of the United States embassies in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam in 1998. The statement conveyed that the Sudan's government will remain engaged in negotiations with the United States of America to settle the issues of the bombing of its embassies in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam in 1998 and to work to fully normalize relations between the two countries in order to completely free the Sudanese people from one of the heaviest legacies of the defunct regime. The Supreme Committee for Health Emergencies issued a statement stating the objective reasons for the extension of the lockdown in Khartoum State for a period of two weeks from May the 19th. The Security and Defense Council has approved the recommendation of the Supreme Committee to extend the lockdown in Khartoum State. Minister of Foreign Affairs Asma Muhammad Abdullah sent a congratulatory message to Ambassador Tete Antonio on the occasion of his appointment as Minister of External Relations of the Republic of Angola. The Federal Minister extended in the message her sincere congratulations and best wishes for success to the Minister in his post, expressing aspiration to work closely with him to promote the distinguished bilateral relations between the two countries, as well as the enhancement of relations of cooperation at the regional and international levels and issues of common concern. 
Prime Minister Dr. Abdullah Hamadouk received the memorandum of Darfur Bar Association regarding the security situation in Sudan in general and Darfur in particular. This came during his meeting today with the delegation of the Darfur Bar Association headed by Professor Muhammad Abdullah Duma. The PM appreciated the efforts of the Darfur Bar Association calling for continued cooperation in all issues related to the situation in Darfur. Prime Minister Dr. Abdullah Hamadok received the initiative of Sheikh Abdullah Azraq Taiba to complete the peace process in the country. This came during his meeting in his office in the Cabinet of Ministers, Sheikh Abdullah Azraq Taiba, headed by his son Sheikh Al Rayah Al Sheikh Abdullah. The media advisor of the Prime Minister's office, Faiz Al Sheikh, said the PM has appreciated Sheikh Abdullah Azraq struggle in the glorious December Revolution, his efforts to complete the peace process, his relations with the leaders of the armed struggle movements, and his Sufis extension in southern Kurdistan, Blue Nile, and eastern Sudan. The delegations of the Sovereign and Ministers' Council briefed the overall situation in Al-Ghadarif State. In a press statement following the delegations meeting with the State Security Committee, headed by the Governor, Caretaker of Al-Ghadarif State, Major General Nasruddin Abdul Qayyum, and the leaders of the regular forces, Muhammad al faqih Suleiman, said that the delegation was informed by detailed reports about the security stability in the state, is witnessing as a result of the efforts made by the regular forces during the last period, and briefed on the criminal situation through the reports submitted by the police leadership, which showed a decrease in criminal reports and rates of crime. The Revolutionary Front expressed optimism over the start of discussion on national issues with the government according to the timetable announced by the Southern Sudan's mediation, which aims to reach a final peace agreement on the 20th of June, 2020. The RF issued a statement renewing its determination to reach a peace agreement that gives new hope to the displaced refugees and the marginalized people as its most important demands despite the health conditions of the corona pandemic the world is going through. The statement has called on the revolution forces for the change and the Sudanese people to support the peace process, especially that the parties enter the final stages of the process, indicating that just peace is the least the front can offer to the Sudanese people to open the way for building civil state, resolve the economic crisis and reforming the foreign relations. The member of the Southern Sudan's Peace Mediation Committee, Dr. Dio Matok, said the start of negotiations between the Sudanese government and the Revolutionary Front on national issues is an important step, expressing his optimism to achieve positive results. He said in a press statement following the end of the opening session through a video conference that the RF presented a paper on national issues which was handed over to the Sudanese government delegation to study it and present its response on it. Dio pointed out that the file of national issues deals with the establishment of the transitional governance mechanisms at the center level, the participation of RF in transitional institutions in the center, besides its dealing with important issues such as the Sudanese identity, the constitutional issues related to constitution making through the constitutional conference in addition to some other sensitive issues that were not touched by the other negotiations tracks. And now we remind you with the headlines. Al-Burhan reiterates Sudan's rejection of foreign troops with the UN mission. Sudan and Ethiopia Political Committee concludes work in Addis Ababa. Supreme Committee for Health Emergencies extends lockdown. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was everything for tonight. Thank you for following and see you next time.